Hey guys, today we're gonna turn this old bay window into this. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen of my semi-new house. Now in this new house, we have this big large bay window which opens up to the backyard of the house because we're on a pie-shaped lot. This side yard kinda is the biggest section of land we have. And with that being said, I wanna remove this old bay window which has clearly seen better days and replace it with a nice sliding glass door. This is a two part series. This is the first part where we put in this door. The next part is gonna be installing a nice deck to the outside to the lower level as this is a raised ranch we're about five feet off the ground. So let's get started ripping off all this trim and then we'll head outside and start ripping off the siding. So we got a baby inside and we've just uncovered a huge amount of rot. Everything is just falling apart. This is a big reason to replace this window in the first place. It's just toast. We had tons of ants in here. Good riddance. So let's put this in uh, hyperlapse mode and just tear this all down. So the demolition's gone pretty well so far. We're back to the studs on the flat sides of both sides of the wall where the bay window used to be. And we still have the floor section that sticks out. This cantilever section is what we're gonna work on removing next. Now you see we have the subfloor right here, but we also have another subfloor and some old school linoleum on top of that that we need to get taken care of to get everything to the right thickness. I'm gonna mark a chalk line right here, use my circular saw there, just do a little scoring pass and we'll rip up this 3-8 subfloor. Then we'll go ahead and start working on ripping out all of this overhang piece right here. We'll move on. So you can see the way the bay window works is it has these cantilever two by eights going within the house. They go all the way back to the main supporting beam and over the outside. That way there's plenty of support. And you're not going to fall through the floor. That being said, we need to get rid of them now. So I'm going to chop them off here. I'm going to chop them an inch and a half back so we can put a two by eight rim joist all along and that'll give us our exterior sheathing. Okay, we've got this area cleared out. Our next step is gonna be making up the difference in sizes. Our door is about 71 inches. Our opening is about 79 and a half inches. So we're gonna use three two by fours on either side to pad this out. So we have something to secure the door to. So our next step is we're gonna put on this beautiful flashing right here. This is blue skin. We're gonna put it all over the sill here. You see, I've gone ahead and evened out some high spots here and shimmed where I needed. In this case, quite a lot of shimming as my house uh, pretty much slopes that way. We'll peel off the backing and then we'll press it on firm using a roller where we need to. Okay, so we have the vinyl door jam. What I've done is remove the doors. You simply hoist them up and slide out the bottoms. This makes this process a lot easier. Believe you me when I say this really sucks when the doors are still installed. So we're gonna get this into place over our blue skin bottom here, and we're just gonna add shims on the side, get it nice and level and plumb. Then we're gonna add all of our screws along the outsides where the shims are. 
So I've drilled a hole in the vinyl to accept my flathead or washer head screw as we don't want to use a countersink screw as it'll pull through the vinyl. And now I'm just going to install my shims, small bit, small bit from opposite sides overlapping each other where that screw is. And we'll push them together till we feel resistance and we'll check everything with our straight edge and our level before installing the screw. Then we'll score and snap off the shim. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the sliding doors. You simply just lift them up into the top track and then lower them onto the sliding rails. You must make sure that the adjustable feet are all the way up first. And then once we get the doors in, we will adjust those feet and make any minor tweaks to make sure the door lands straight on both sides. <coughs> Next, I'm going to screw on this header piece. Now, this doesn't have to be any kind of beam or anything because our beam is up here. We got two by tens, two of them across up here. That's how they framed in the house. This is surely for drywall and insulation. Well, I couldn't quite show every detail as it's getting late and I don't want to live with mosquitoes or possums in my house tonight. So we had to get everything nice and sealed up. The last step to do is to put some window and door expanding foam all around this and we're good for the night. So the spray foam's all dry, the window's nice and secure. Now I'm gonna take my knife and a chisel and just clean up, make everything flush. Then I'm gonna be adding some half inch plywood around the outside to flush everything up with the OSB that's already here. So our next step is going to be installing the flashing and then the trim around the door. The trim I'm going to be using is a little bit wider than the existing siding here, not to mention we have J-channel up here and none down here. This is 70 siding I can't get my hands on anymore, so there's no chance of just putting more siding up. So we're going to put this big PVC trim around everything, but to do that first we need to trim this aluminum siding. So I've got my circular saw here with the blade in backwards. This does work very well. And we're just gonna follow this chalk line that I've marked right here on both sides. Next, we're gonna install this blue skin. It's our peel and stick flashing tape. We're gonna put on the bottom, then the sides, and then a little bit on the top, just because there's extra. And we'll get to putting on the skirting on the sides and then we're going to put a little bit of the extra siding on the bottom it'll be hidden by the deck anyway so who cares what it looks like so this is the trim we're going to be using for around the door this is one by eight and one by two pvc trim it's never going to rot my favorite now what we're gonna do is attach this one by two on its side to the one by eight, and I'm just gonna staple this in place, come back, add some screws. And the reason we're doing this, one, is because it's decorative and looks better. Two, is because the siding on my house kind of sticks out a little far, and that's because the way they built the house, the siding kind of has like a wave to it, and the house has shifted over time. So this is gonna eat up that distance and allow us to just cock the siding to the side of this trim, no matter how thick it is. So we've got our trim put together. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a heavy bead of caulking between the door and the blue skin right here, and then we'll put our trim on top of that. And then we'll add some caulking along the trim and the front of the door as well, keep everything nice and watertight. To install the trim, we're gonna use two inch brad nails just kind of to hold it up. And then I'll come back and screw everything in with some two inch screws. We're gonna countersink it and then cover those screw holes with the caulking so you'll never see them. So we've got our two side trims up. I put a heavy bead of caulk between the blue skin and the bottom of the door here. Now we're gonna go ahead and install some J-channel on the bottom and our siding. So 
So because the original house is made with plaster and plasterboard, the wall thickness is all over the place. Over here, I've had to add about three eighths of an inch of thickness and shims, and then over here, a full inch. So just do what you have to to build it up. But now we're gonna go ahead and put drywall compound everywhere. That's probably gonna sink in as it dries. We'll add some more and then add our tape on top, and then we'll come back with our final skim coat and get everything to the right level. So our next step is gonna be covering up that trapezoid shape where the bay window used to be in the soffit. So what I have here is 12 foot sections of perforated soffit I bought from my local building supply, color match to the house. And because they're 12 feet, we're gonna to need to chop them down to 20 and a half inches to match the overhang of the house. Now the miter saw, I have set up my saw blade backwards. That way it doesn't grab the material and just like rip it up out of your hands and splinter it. This is the way you wanna do it. Blades in reverse, it leaves a super nice cut. Now it is loud as all hell, so I will be wearing hearing protection. So to begin work replacing the soffit in our little trapezoid shape that's up here, I'm going to start by mounting this 2x4 sideways so we can mount our light right in the middle of the door as it wasn't there before. Then we're going to go ahead and tear down the triangular shapes on either side and we'll go from there. Now we want to get our J-channel mounted to the house, but before we can do that, we have to use this three-quarter inch piece of material and pad it out from the OSB just because of the way the house was designed. So typically your J-channel is screwed up to boards coming this way, but they don't exist here and I don't feel like adding them. That's why we added this padding strip here. We are just going to attach it through the side and that'll be just fine. So when they originally built this house, they came from both ends and worked their way towards the bay window, which I guess made sense at the time, but now it just leaves us with one choice. We're going to start over here, go that way, and we'll cut what we need to at the end and try to make it look as best as we can. These pieces, we're just going to pop up here and put a screw in this side, and simple as that. So conveniently, this box ended up right on the edge. So I'm just gonna mark where the hole is and then cut it with my tin snips right from the edge. And this will be super easy. But the last thing we need to do is reinstall our light. Okay, we got this up here, no one died. I think my wife might have died. She's laughing hysterically.